The one thing everyone knows about glass is that it is brittle and easily broken. The point is that it is weak in tension, which explains the method used for cutting a glass sheet. A scratch followed by the application of tension. Result, a clean break. Now it's the presence of invisible micro cracks in the surface which makes ordinary glass fragile. How then can we make glass stronger? The story begins with Prince Rupert of the Rhine 350 years ago. Prince Rupert was a nephew of Charles I and commanded his army in the Civil War. After the king's defeat, Rupert fled to the continent, returning in 1660 with samples of these glass drops. The king sent them to the Royal Society, who very quickly produced a report showing how they were made. This is what they found. They are produced by dropping molten glass into cold water, which cools the outside very quickly, while the inside is still molten. As this cools, it contracts, forming voids and putting the outside surface under strong compression. It is this compression of the surface which gives the glass its toughness by preventing the micro cracks developing. However, the inside is under strong tension, and when the tail is broken off, this breaks the balance of forces, causing the drop to disintegrate explosively. The explanation was published by Robert Hooke in 1665, when he likened the effect to removing the keystone from an arch. Another example of the same phenomenon can be produced with a common or garden bottle. Here we see bottles being produced at a very fast rate on a modern automatic production line. After being formed from globs of molten glass, they cool rapidly and are then annealed to remove strain, before sometimes having a final spraying to protect the surfaces from damage. Annealing is achieved by cooling sufficiently slowly. However, as we've seen with the Rupert's drops, rapid cooling produces a really toughened glass. So, by taking a bottle from the production line before annealing, the outside surface is toughened. That is, if the bottle doesn't break first under the strain, it's toughened because of the rapid cooling, as you can see. However, the inside is under tension and is very weak, so that only slight damage, such as that caused by dropping a small piece of glass into the bottle, will cause it to shatter. However, it is possible to toughen glass in a controlled way. Here are some examples of properly toughened glasses. First, a single optic fibre, which is only the thickness of a human hair, but by protecting the freshly formed surface immediately with a plastic coating, the formation of flaws is prevented, and the fibre begins to approach the theoretical strength of glass, which is in fact greater than that of steel. Many other glass objects need to be toughened before they can be used. For example, car, train and aircraft windows, floors and shop windows. This is achieved by cooling both surfaces of the glass sheet by blasting them while still hot with air jets so as to put them under compression. Often two or more sheets will be used which are laminated together with an adhesive to prevent the propagation of damage and the disintegration of the sheet. Specially tough glass can also be produced by a chemical process in which the surface compression is brought about by replacing the sodium ions in the surface with larger potassium ions. This again puts the surface into compression, resulting in an extraordinarily strong glass. So there it is. I hope you now know more. Glass is both beautiful and of enormous importance. We look at it, through it and into it. We build with it, use it to light our world and in communications. We contain in it liquids, gases and vacuum. 
We use it to look inwards at the microscopic world and outwards at the universe. It's one of man's oldest technologies and yet is continually surprising us with the new. It is and will continue to be one of the most important pillars of our modern civilization.